June is Pride Month. This is a month where we collectively celebrate the LGBTQ plus community across the country for a month. And as exciting and wonderful as it is to see people celebrating their love and bringing the, the truest versions of themselves, we also see capitalism trying to get its grubby little hands on joy by turning a profit on anything LGBTQ related. From rainbow banners to rainbow foods to rainbow dildos, what some people have called rainbow capitalism permeates our society for roughly 30 days out of the year. And don't be fooled here, okay? This has nothing to do with their support of the LGBTQ plus community and everything to ensure that their bottom line stays solid. Now, historically speaking, capitalism has never been kind to the LGBTQ plus community, despite the fact that in many early human cultures, same-sex rituals were an integral part of their communities. This means playing gay chicken is a modern invention which went out of fashion as quickly as it was in fashion. And not to brag here, but I've pretty much won every game of gay chicken I've ever played. The key there is to not be a hyper-masculine douchebag that calls everything he doesn't like gay. And once you let go of your machismo, you can realize that you can appreciate beauty on all levels regardless of gender. And the game of gay chicken isn't a game at all, but two people sharing an intimate moment to strengthen their bond of friendship. And in some cultures, non-binary and transgender folks were considered special and were gifted with powers. So instead of ostracizing them, these cultures held them in high regard. And this is quite the opposite way we look at non-binary and trans people in our society today. Is, isn't it fun when ancient humans who hadn't figured out indoor plumbing out-progressive us, quote, cultured humans of today? At current, there are a plethora of anti-trans bills in various states attempting to exclude the trans community from receiving any social services, particularly health care. One of the major ways capitalism is excluding trans folks from the system is by using Title IX against them. By saying trans kids can't participate in sports because it gives them a, quote, unfair advantage, prevents these kids from receiving grants and scholarships to attend colleges. Trans kids are already in low-income communities and housing, so removing them from an outlet that allows them to succeed is cruel on virtually every level. More than that, it's based on unscientific reasons. The, quote, unfair advantage argument has no merit, especially when it comes to sports. The argument is that trans men would outperform cisgendered women solely based on the argument that men are biologically stronger than women. I mean, I remember women athletes were prominently featured in the Battle of the Sexes, where it was proven that gender has nothing to do with athletic prowess. And neither does biology. Some people, regardless of their gender, are just gifted in the sports arena. If that natural gift is honed through training, will, and determination, you'll find a phenomenal athlete. What's between their legs has nothing to do with it. Despite these anti-trans pieces of legislation, you see major sports corporations support pride and flaunt their rainbow gear made by their partnering corporations. And if if, a, if a, a, a famous athlete wears these products, that means us regular folks can be manipulated into buying them too. If these organizations really cared about the LGBTQ plus community, particularly the trans community, they'd protest these bills in their states and look to hire more trans athletes to put, put on the field, putting an end to the quote, unfair advantage argument. Regardless of what you might think, Sports is based in science, but these anti-trans bills that use sports as a vehicle for hate are not. They're based in sexist pseudoscience that harken back to the days of race science. In order to continue ostracizing the LGBTQ plus community, capitalist societies criminalized any behavior that was related to the community, like cross-dressing or sodomy. And look, sodomy or or maybe a more familiar term to the newer generation, butt stuff, isn't exclusive to the LGBTQ plus community. If it were, we wouldn't have an overwhelming amount of heterosexual porn dedicated to butt stuff. 
And that's not me shaming anybody here, okay? Just merely pointing out the fallacy and hypocrisy of these types of laws. Look, if you're into butt stuff, be safe. And you do you with someone who also wants to do you with consent. Family dynamics were also used to ostracize the community. Traditional family dynamics are patriarchal, which means that the, the man goes out to earn the bacon. And yes, in some instances, capitalists would pay folks in bacon, while the women tend to the homes and the children. And in this sense, families weren't about love and caring for each other, but a financial transaction. Right? The traditional patriarchal family dynamic was created as a way to lock gender roles in the family. It cemented what a family meant under capitalist structure, and sex was only meant for procreation. The joy of sex was kept out of the conversation. Freedom was associated with extreme modesty and traditionalism. Until, of course, capitalism discovered that sex sells. And in the early days of this, this discovery, it was bare ankles everywhere, baby. Okay, some, some people, some of them even, you could see some calves. If you, I mean, if you were really lucky, hoo-hoo, look out, here comes the femur. Here comes the femur. Now we just wait for ads with big old booties and shredded dudes to sell a fucking hamburger. Social institutions reinforced these very traditional family roles in an attempt to separate the LGBTQ plus community from the labor force. These very strict gender roles not only kept women from entering the workforce, but also members of the LGBTQ plus community. Until last year, it was completely legal to discriminate and fire somebody over their gender identity and sexual orientation. This means that even if you were out of the closet, they had to go back in to hold on to their jobs and be able to earn a living. Capitalism blatantly violates the Fourth Amendment to privacy with these policies and laws. And if you're an accountant, I mean, what you do in your home shouldn't really matter. And if your company needs to know, it's likely that your company is run by a sexually repressed capitalist pervert. Or perverts. It could be multiple people that run your company. Uh, and, and there's no gender involved in this either, okay? Women can be perverts too, all right? They've, they've, they, they fought for that right, probably. And look, if that's a bit of a shocker, don't forget that until recently you couldn't have tattoos or different color hair at a lot of jobs. You literally couldn't express yourself, which is a violation of the First Amendment. I mean, under capitalism, more of your rights are stripped away by using basic needs as a scapegoat to complacency. Capitalism sees the world in a gray scale, while the rest of us see the world for what it is. A full color spectrum, and sometimes the rainbow isn't enough. In 2004, 61% of Americans opposed the LGBTQ community. By 2019, the public perception had flipped. Over 60% of Americans were supportive of the LGBT community, and you started seeing a lot more politicians wearing little rainbow flags and looking to hire just the right number of LGBTQ people on their staff. Not only that, but dec a decade-long hardball stance of homophobia had suddenly changed considering their constituents felt the opposite way of their platform. So revisionist history is the only way a politician or as it's known now, a Twitter influencer, can hold on to their power. Look, politicians don't have beliefs. They have a bank account and a need for power. Whatever fills those holes is just fine as long as it keeps their bank accounts full and their power hunger satiated. At minimum, this kind of behavior signals acceptance, but that's about where it stops because come July 1st, these signs will be replaced with American flags and red, white, and blue propaganda to celebrate Independence Day. It won't be about the struggles of the LGBTQ plus community, but about nationalistic pride we can use to increase the military budget and cut social services to our most vulnerable. All of the rainbow capitalism will come to a halt until it's time to get out those votes. Then it's back to the rainbow pins and the fake gay solidarity. Politicians will be looking for the gayest baby they can kiss so you can put them in power and kiss their rings. Look, I'm not here to say that we haven't made strides to improve the lives of the LGBTQ plus members in our, in our country, but 
That didn't come because of capitalism. It came because people decided to open their minds and their hearts, move away from the traditional family dynamics that were about financial transactions and population growth, to family dynamics that are about love and compassion and growth and understanding. Capitalism only fell in line after public opinion changed on the topic and they saw their bottom line bottom out. Then it was onwards to exploitation. So it's up to us to denounce rainbow capitalism that tokenizes and uses our LGBTQ brothers and sisters as scapegoats from the historical atrocities this system has taken part in. You can see how the celebration of pride is not just an LGBTQ plus issue, but also a healthcare, class struggle, and privacy issue. Pride shows you the intersectionality of everything and how we are all in the fight against capitalism despite our identities. It's great that we get a month to celebrate the LGBTQ communities, but it shouldn't end there. We should all be standing up for each other regardless of what month day or week it is and that has been your dispatch for this week uh, if you enjoyed this dispatch please make sure you hit the like button the share button and uh, if you're listening to this on the audio version uh, leave us a review leave us a review on 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 the old uh, itunes or the or the, the stitchers or uh, whatever the hell you're <laughs> listening to this on. Even if you're listening to the audio on Rockfin, you know, leave a comment, share this out. Let some people know uh, uh, that we're, we're talking about this topic because uh, a lot of the topics that we address on this show uh, and in the live streams on Forkful of Noodles uh, completely get censored by uh, the big corporate tech companies like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all of that stuff. So it's really, really important that um, that you guys share and help get the word out. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action, and the very last Friday of every single month, they happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are ten dollars, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new socio-political topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to uh, certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do. And then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members. Uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content. So tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member. But if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the, the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without, uh, without, the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right. I've got uh, T-shirts. I've got mugs, hoodies, 
you name it, it's there probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, Uh It's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate all, 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more, then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay what you want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play. All of the all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate irregularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 